Can you uh, tell us how the works in the show differ from the practice or the works you're making for uh, Furniture make Meets Its Maker? With, with the exhibition Furniture Meets Its Maker, I said just about everything I could say about furniture and uh, furniture making, uh, the ideas that furniture tackles. So I guess the new body of work maybe continues that in that maybe the gaze turns towards the, the person with the issues how we use furniture, or wield it, or what are the subliminal things going on. So I think the new work, I hope, is targeting us. So is it about how furniture shapes us? No, it's about how we reveal ourselves through the objects we think are utilitarian or uh, decorative, uh, that, that, that exist within the territory of uh, interior design. Oh, it's all just superficial, decorative, quaint stuff we do the interiors of our caves with. You know? uh, I, I'm suspect of that, and I, I think there's a lot going on, and it's very revealing. So, uh, I, I, I will try, I, I'm still intending to stay focused on furniture and the fitments of the home, but the comments I make uh, will be more about uh, uh, revealing uh, our symptoms. But there's a couple of interests that, that are going on for me, and that is um, I'm really interested in transformation. If I can make art through the process of transforming something that we are very familiar with and recognize into something that says something unexpected, to, uh, that would be ideal. And using the least amount of intervention possible. The other thing that interests me and, and I sort of asked myself this a couple of years ago, is why does this stuff all look old? What's with the old furniture thing? Um, why not uh, use uh, contemporary furniture? So I had to think a lot about why that is, because it was almost instinct operating. But I think what happens is um, I'm more interested in the idea and if I can lob the idea back into some unspecific time period, it becomes a, a more pure a suggestion, um, as opposed to something that would be more connected to style. And that, that turns into another thing. And uh, so it, it gets you away from relentless pursuit of novelty or the moment kind of allows you to concentrate on the ideas. Exactly. And there's a certain, I, I would like you to approach the pieces with a certain amount of trust and that you will believe what I'm saying to be true. If you can set, it, set up a scenario like that where the person already trusts what they're going to see to any kind of conceptual suggestions you make will be digested far more interestingly easily. But with the recent works, I want, I thought if I, if I had five opportunities to make five or six comments on the human condition, what would those be? A piece maybe we'll, we'll have a look at is um, A Restored Night, which is about um, you know, our, our, the duality of the, how, we, how we 
perceive ourselves. There's always this lurking other of us that, and so we kind of live in the negative space of all these, this, this other person or who I'm not and all of the objects in our home. There's always kind of this flip-flop between who, who, who is us and who isn't us. Uh, something else might interest uh, you know, our, our ability to do damage. Uh, we are not all uh, pleasant. Uh, we're, not a pleasant no. we're not a pleasant beast. We, we, we like to do damage. It's, it's kind of a sexy thing. And there's always this, again, struggle between innocence and, 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 and treacherous state. So I mean, we walk around with these ideas. So the furniture pieces quickly turned into perhaps just things you could apply to the body. Uh, a chair you apply to the body. Let's try this on you, Matt. See if it fits on. Yeah, what size are I should maybe, this is adjustable, so. I'm a, I'm a 44. 44 tall. Okay, good. Now this is going to hurt a little bit. Yes. Keep your back straight. I feel better already. You can do no wrong. Mm -hmm. Is this furniture? Yeah, I think it is. The restored night. Uh, Again, is, is, is painting in a frame. Uh, it's about restoration, but it's also about our, I spoke earlier about our schizophrenic, in a way, nature. I don't know if that's a term, but us and the other, mm -hmm. how we compare ourselves to who we're not. Uh, we're gonna look at those we're gonna look at it. And I worked on it quite a bit because I thought I would get creative. But then I would just end up painting over it and back to just the card. I think the restoration is both in the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, the frame was quite damaged and I repaired it as best I could. And the panel. Uh, it's painted on solid wood. So there's an idea of, of you know, your, your classic example of restoring a fine antique of some sort. Um, but then you frame the frame or encase it. And the whole thing seems to frame the eye. Mm -hmm. um, So that it looks back at you. Or out from behind. Mm -hmm. It was underneath and it came very close to being painted back over again. The whiteness and just the blue line of the, the symbolic eye. But somehow it, 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 I like the way it's coming out through from behind the painting. Yeah, it's the bit that disrupts the surface of the card. and plays with the, the kind of worked surface of the light. And then, you know, the fact that you can hang the painting either way. Right. This does hang the other way around. There's mounts on the back that catch the mount on the wall in exactly the same place. Uh, so I won't tell you which way to hang. Um, so there's an uncertainty to how that needs to be. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a bit about how you come to the scale of your works? Uh, the scale of the work, um, architecture is not my scale, and uh, jewelry is not my scale, exactly. Um, so I guess I like objects or forms or shapes about the same size as us. It's probably what, what fascinates me about furniture. 